Hi guys, welcome to M&D Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. I'm going to be talking about the monitoring and evaluation written test questions and answers today. If you are here for the very first time, please do it to subscribe to this channel because on a regular basis I post updates in relation to M&D. And also, I just want to mention that you should watch this video from start to finish because we're going to be talking about a, a paper that was given to some of the students who were part of the six months coaching program. Okay. And just in case you want to be part of the six months coaching program, you can always write to me. We can figure out something. But just to let you know, the six months coaching program will soon be coming to an end and it will come in a different form, which I'm so excited. It will be much more better and much more engaging for all the, the viewers and students who want to be part of it. So please write to me. Now, I'm going to talk about this question paper. Okay. And the way we're going to do this is that a lot of times people have complained that I don't really give the answers to the questions. But uh, I'll try my best to give you the answers to these questions which are here. So this question paper, it was actually an exam given to some students this year. who were part of the six months coaching program. It was worth 102 marks. Okay. And it was two hours long. Okay. Now let's look at the first question. Uh, in South Sudan, you have been assigned as M&D specialist to carry out a data quality audit in seven regions what is data quality okay so data quality guys is uh, basically we are simply saying that is this data this raw form does it conform to a certain standard okay so for data to be of quality we are talking of this data being precise being accurate being of integrity, being timely, those are among some of the standards that are there. So if you go to various books, especially on the internet, you discover that there is a standard to this. So the key point is for you to understand that for data to be of quality, it must, it must, sorry, adhere to this standard sorry standard I don't know what's happening with the keyboard standard of quality so that is the key point guys that's how you define data quality adherence to a certain standard okay so now what is this standard so to get the maximum marks and for those of you who are part of the coaching program to get maximum marks you must also explain the standard so we are talking about eg integrity We are talking about accuracy. We are talking about timeliness. Okay. So those are some of the things that we're talking about in order to ensure that the data is of high quality. Okay, so now briefly outline the step-by-step -step process of conducting a data quality audit. Okay, so let me explain these steps by means of going to the, to the end of this. I'll, I'll use a blank sheet of paper so that you get to see the steps. I think there's something, there's a bit of some blank uh, space here. Okay, so the step-by-step -step approach of doing a data quality audit
Okay, so just to start with, there isn't really, I wouldn't say it's, it's not like whatever answer you write is wrong, okay? It's, I mean, what I'm just trying to say, you don't really need to memorize this. It's all about just giving some kind of uh, generic approach, okay, of how this uh, audit is, is done. It, there could be different processes in different organizations, but they are, they are the same. So this question really wants you to really just give an overview of how this is done and you still get the maximum max. So the first step is to do a desk review. Okay, so the desk review involves looking at all the relevant documentation that is is there, especially uh, things like uh, reports, program or project documentation. Now, why is this important? Because uh, it will give you a few of uh, what is the status in terms of um, the data quality, what areas of focus should you, should you zero in on. Okay, then the next step is for you to, to constitute the audit team. Okay, so the, the audit team, uh, basically you can be doing, you can do this data quality audit as an M&D officer yourself, or you can have a team. And the team, uh, having, uh, doing it as a team reduces that issue element of subjectivity, because when you have a mix of different people on, a, on board, it helps improve objectivity of the activity because each of them will be looking at things as they are, okay? Unlike if you just have one person. So you need to constitute the audit team. The next step is to select the sites. The sites to audit, all right? So normally the way it is, is as an organization, you have headquarters, then you have all these service deliveries, uh, regional sites or the sites at the grass, grassroots. So you, you have to select the sites. Now, there is a criteria that you use to select the sites. So you must uh, take note of that. There's a link I'm going to give to you where you can actually download this question paper as well as download the the actual process the book that highlights these processes so i'll give you that link at the end of this video then the next step is to select the indicators that will be audited now the way it is is that you don't audit all the indicators, okay? But you just select a few for obvious reasons because you may be limited with resources. So it's just good enough to have uh, one or two indicators selected. Now there's a, a criteria that is followed to select the indicators that you audit. And one of the criteria we use to select the indicator is the priority of the stakeholders. Where do stakeholders feel you should con concentrate your efforts when you do this audit? Another issue is um, if, for example, a certain indicator is receiving a lot of support, a lot of funding compared to other indicators, then that could be your priority area. Then um, the, the, the fifth step is to now conduct the data quality audit. Okay, basically yeah, we are talking about data collection. 
Okay, so you do the data collection. But in if you've watched the other videos that I did, I mentioned that actually you need to um, calculate variance and you also need to assess the data management system. Okay, that's the fifth step. The sixth step is you do the analysis and report writing. Okay, actually before you do the analysis and report writing, you can actually do an exit, a debriefing meeting, because if you're in the field, you obviously need to give uh, some feedback to the staff members in the field where you audited. So you do a debriefing meeting Okay, then uh, step seven is the analysis and report writing. Okay, that's where now you do the in-depth analysis. And then uh, step eight is an improvement plan. So an improvement plan is basically where you, you tell the people you've audited that, okay, these were the weaknesses and this is the improvement plan we think you can use to improve on your weaknesses. Okay, so that's the step-by-step -step approach to doing the audit. It's not so hard, and I, I sometimes wonder why some of the students get this one wrong. It's not complicated, so please um, follow these steps. Okay, now let's go to the next question. The next question, which is question C, outline your findings of the data quality audit. Okay, so table one outlines your findings of the data quality audit. Okay, so now basically, I talked about the calculation of variance, which is, which is this. Now the way it is with variance is that, um, Okay, first let me give you this scenario. You've done the audit in these regions here. Okay, region A, B, C, D, E, and F, G. So the way it is, any variance that is between negative 5% to positive 5%, what this means is that the data is of acceptable quality. If it's between negative 5% to five, uh, positive 5%. So now the formula for doing this, you need to watch one of my previous videos to get that formula. But basically when you find the answer, any answer that is between this range or even equal to these values means that the data is of acceptable quality. Okay, I use the word acceptable, not good or bad, but I, acceptable is the best word to use because it uh, uh, meets this, this criteria. So meaning that region A actually has acceptable data quality, but because uh, B, in region B, it's unacceptable because it is less than um, negative 5%. Region C is greater than 5%, so this is not acceptable. Even this is not acceptable. This is not acceptable. This is not acceptable. Wow, I'm sure you can see there's a lot of unacceptable. And this is acceptable. So the only acceptable data quality um, for all the regions is only A and G. So here they're asking you to find the average variance for all regions. So all you do is just add plus positive five, uh, positive 5% neg plus negative. So maybe let me just do it so that you don't get any confused. Um, so average variance
is equal to positive 5% plus negative 10% plus Okay, so it's plus positive 5%. I'm looking for the plus sign. Okay, it's all the same, but I just don't want to confuse you. So that's why I'm doing it in such a way that you're following through. So again, plus positive 19%. Plus negative 7%. Plus negative 17% plus positive 5%. So what happens is all you do now is see after you've added all these, you just divide it by the total number of values, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. And whatever answer you get is the average variance. So again, if the average variance is outside this range, then there is a serious problem. Okay, so I hope you're not getting bored, guys. Let's see if I can answer one more question and then later on at your own time you can answer this question yourself, this, the rest of the question yourself by doing some bit of research, okay? I don't want to be spoon feeding you. But like I said earlier on, if you want some help in the six months coaching, you can always write to me. Okay, so they're saying here Using the basic approach, develop at least five indicators for this project. Okay, so this one, guys, is a long process. Okay, it's quite long. And I, I think I can't do this in this uh, video. It's a, quite a long process. And I know some of you may not stick around. So let me just go to something that's a bit easier. Okay, so briefly outline the step-by-step -step approach of developing a data collection tool. This is one of my favorite uh, questions. And the reason being is that, um, you know, a data collection tool is the instrument, a critical instrument that we M&D officers use in order to facilitate the processes that we do. Now, what is the step-by-step -step approach? Okay, so just follow the step-by-step -step approach. Okay, step-by-step -step approach. Okay, so the first step is that um, you need to review your log frame, okay, or review the, the program document. Basically, it's desk review. Okay, let me just say desk review. Okay, then the second step is to list all the indicators for your project. Now, remember the indicators are at different levels. You've got the impact indicators. You've got the outcome and then you've got the output indicators, okay? Now, the third step for each indicator, determine the type of data collection method that you will use. Now we've got different types of data collection methods. You've got focus group discussions, you've got one-on-one -on -one interviews, you've got key performance interviews, you've got survey observation, 
and the list goes on. So for each of those uh, indicators you've listed, you need to determine the, the type of data collection method. And the reason being is that, um, let's say you're dealing with uh, a qualitative indicator. A qualitative indicator is an indicator that is a bit more subjective. Like if you ask people for their opinions, that's a qualitative indicator. So now imagine you ask for their opinions, what data collection method are you most likely to use? It is something that is more subjective, like key performance interviews or focus group discussions. Okay, so then the fourth step is to develop the tool. The fifth step, test the tool. Okay, so when we test the tool here, you simply go to your office and counter check that this tool is capturing all the data in the indicators. Then the sixth step is to train staff how to use the tool. The seventh step is, is to pilot test. Pilot test the tool. And then the eighth step is to launch the tool. Okay. Do you see how easy it is? I didn't have to read anywhere. All of this is because it has come from my head. It is practical. And that's what M&D should be all about. It should be something practical. So now I would urge you guys to, to answer these questions at your own time. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, get in touch with me. I've been your host, Coach Alexander, and see you on the other side.